Let's review consumer choices from the Module 10 Florida Virtual School Personal and Family Finance course. We begin with advertising. Advertising affects us every single day, even if we aren't aware of it. According to this website, the average number of advertisements and brand exposures per day per person is over 5,000 exposures. Everything that we see on TV, radio, driving down the road, all of that can be considered a brand exposure or an advertisement. Advertisement is the way that companies aim to persuade or motivate people to try to buy their product or service. Think about all the places that we see ads. We mentioned TVs. You can see someone drinking a Coke or a Pepsi. You could see um, someone shopping in a certain store or radio. You can hear someone singing a song with a certain product in it or doing a certain service. You can hear um, the DJs talking about stuff. You can see it on the billboards down the side of the road. It can be everywhere. Your friends could be wearing a shirt with the, the logo on it. So we can see ads just about everywhere we go. If you think you aren't influenced by advertisement, think of some of the slogans that are up here. Just do it. I'm loving it. Have it your way. Melt in your mouth, not in your hand. So think about it. If you can identify the product that goes along with that slogan, you've been influenced by advertising. The types of advertising strategies that people use are listed here, or at least the, the most popular ones. Weasel the words is probably my favorite. It's the words that sound really great but really mean nothing. They don't make any promises. For example, the toothpaste combats oral bacteria. Well, combats doesn't mean that it wins. It doesn't mean that it kills the oral bacteria. It just means that it fights that bacteria. It makes no promise to get rid of the bacteria, but combat sounds like an awesome word. It sounds like it's going to really just get in there and kick butt on that bacteria. But there's really no promise behind that word. Endorsements. We've all seen this where celebrities wear their, their sneakers or someone drinks this drink or uses this product or uses this makeup. And obviously people think if the celebrity uses it, I'm going to use it too. Then we have testimonials where somebody who maybe not who maybe isn't a celebrity says that they've used the product and they recommend it. Then there's facts and figures. So they use statistics or scientific claims for the product. And this one we probably hear the most for toothpaste and toothbrushes. Nine out of ten dentists recommend this toothpaste. It's awesome. Of course, with statistics and scientific claims, any type of research, you could always skew the numbers to make it look like what you want it to look like. So always, you know, do your research on that kind of stuff. Card stacking is, an, is another very popular advertising strategy. It's when you talk about all the wonderful things about a product but leave out all the negative parts of it. So it's, again, it's really important to do your research before you buy something based on an advertisement. Glittering generalities, again, uses appealing words to sell the product. You're going to look younger. You're going to look more beautiful. You're going to have whiter teeth. So it just makes you want to buy that product. So what should you do before buying it? Obviously, consider why you want to buy it. Is it something that you need? Again, it always comes down to needs and wants. And keep in mind that sometimes we, we distort our needs. You might need a new computer. Yours might have crashed. You got the, the blue screen or the black screen, and it's not working anymore. But do you really need to go out and buy the latest, greatest two, $3,000 laptop? Or maybe you can buy an old computer or an older model, or a desktop. It doesn't have to be a Mac. You know, it can be a PC, something that's going to get you through. Think about those things. Um, maybe you need a new phone. You dropped yours in the toilet or something, and you need to do, buy a new phone. You can buy a new phone that's a, a model old, and you can buy it for probably a dollar. Or you can go spend $600 on the latest, greatest phone. So keep in mind, needs and wants are different. You might need a phone, but you don't need a $600 phone. But also look up the reviews. What did other people have to say about the product that actually bought it? I love going on Amazon and seeing what the reviews are. I may not buy it on Amazon. I'm going to look around for the best price. But 
I want to see what the five-star people had to say about it. I want to see what the one-star people had to say about it. And I love reading the three stars, because that's usually where you get a, a good sample of, of realistic um, reviews. So keep that in mind before you buy anything. And then we have identity theft. Identity theft is when someone takes your personal information, your personally identifying information, such as the social security number, driver's license number, bank account information, any of that information, and then they take that to commit fraud or other crime. The U.S. estimates that there's over 9 million people that are victims of identity theft every year. That's a ton. There are entire businesses dedicated towards identity theft now. That's how big a deal it is. Criminals take your personal information, and what they'll do is most people are probably used to maybe having a credit card stolen, and they, they get a random purchase, and the credit card company puts a freeze on it, gives you a new card, everything's fine. But what can really happen with identity theft is they take your personal information and open up a new credit card that you don't know anything about. So they're just out there swiping and, and creating all this debt for you that you know nothing about because it's not your current credit card. They opened a new one. Or maybe they um, opened up a cell phone account with, with Sprint or AT&T or anything like that. They might even rent an apartment in your name so it's your debt. So it's very important that we keep track of our identity and, and all of our information and our credit so that we can prevent that from happening. So how do they steal your identity? Number one, they can dig through your trash. So shred your information. Don't give them an opportunity to find it in the trash. Sometimes they steal it. They go, they grab your purse or wallet, or they might even steal it right out of your mailbox. Most people don't think about that last one. Stealing it out of your mailbox? So don't put your mail out at night and don't leave it out overnight. You know, make sure that you get the mail when you come home. Make sure you don't put the mail out until right before it gets picked up or take it to one of those blue boxes or the post office itself. Sometimes they can take your information and change your address so the mail gets rerouted to wherever they want it to go so they don't even have to show up and steal it out of your mailbox. They can just have your mail delivered personally to them. Then there's phishing. We've all heard about phishing before but maybe you weren't sure what it was. Basically, they call pretending to be the bank or somebody else, and they ask you for your information. And you think, well, obviously I wouldn't fall for something like that, but people fall for it every day. What they do is they get you really worked up, like there's been some compromises, people are losing money, we really want to make sure we verify your information right away so that you don't lose any of your money. Please give us your name, give us your address, give us your social security number, give us your phone number, you know, all that stuff. And so you just start giving it out to them. When something like that happens, hang up, call your bank back, or better yet, go into the bank and talk to someone. Pretexting is when, and I think I spelled that wrong, pretexting is when they call when they call the bank pretending to be you. So they've probably already fished to get your information or stolen it out of the mailbox or something. And they call the bank saying, here's my birth, here's my, my social security number, my date of birth, I need my account number, and I need to transfer money or I need to ch make a check out. And so they go to the bank and take out your information. And then there's skimming. Skimming is a special electronic device that goes over a card reader. So think about when you're at the gas station and you're pumping gas and you swipe your card into that little thing, that little slot and you pull it back out and then you pump your gas. So a skimming device goes over top of that. So you may not even realize it's there. And then someone later comes back and takes the device off when no one's around and that device has recorded your card information. So avoid giving out your social security number at all costs. Usually you really only need it after you've already been hired for a job. You shouldn't need it to apply for a job. You shouldn't need it for anything else, but you definitely need it once you've gotten the job. Make sure you check your credit report. You can call the credit bureaus and, and have that pulled probably once a year or every other year for free. Make sure you shred your bills, statements, and anything with personal or financial information on it. Avoid giving out your personal information over the phone. Don't carry any information on you unless you absolutely need it. And keep all your information in a safe place, especially if you're sharing an apartment or a dorm with, with people. You don't always know those people, and you definitely don't always know their friends. So keep that in mind. Um, in your home, you want to make sure that stuff is safe, too. What you can do after you think your identity has been compromised is put an alert, a fraud alert, on your credit. 
So call Equifax, Experian, or TransUnion and put a fraud alert on your credit report. That will stop the thief from being able to open any new accounts in your name. You can also close any accounts and file a dispute. Then there's also a credit freeze. A credit freeze prevents anyone from even being able to view your credit. Um, and so they, if they can't view it, they definitely can't open up new accounts for you. A fraud alert, it's the credit report is still visible, but the company will still have to call to verify that you are who you are before giving out the new credit. So a freeze is a little bit more than a fraud alert, um, but either one of them is going to help prevent someone from being able to take out any more credit. So make sure you've reviewed Module 10. Make sure you do your uh, review and critical thinking questions. Your lab, make sure you watch your lab videos and do the lab questions and your discussion questions and quiz. And let me know if you have any problems or questions. Thank you. Ooh.